the family of Sofia Lorenzo Juarez would have given up all hopes of learning the fate of their little missing girl. However, recent discoveries and the almost religious devotion of complete strangers has proven that no wait is too long. So, how did she get missing? Who was responsible? And where is she today? Sofia Lorenzo Juarez was born in California on the 5th of February to Maria Juarez, a young mother who adored her, and Andres Gutierrez Abraham, a father who refused to acknowledge her existence or the fact that she was his. Since Maria was still a teenager at the time, she was wise enough to realize that she couldn't properly raise Sofia on her own. To do that, she would need all the support she could get. So, she turned to her mother, Ignacia Prado Juarez. Ignacia lived in Kennewick, Washington. And Maria moved in to live with her mom, who welcomed her daughter and granddaughter with open arms. Maria had at least six siblings, and most of them lived in their mother's house with their kids and partners. They all adored little Sofia. All of that love and affection had a direct effect on little Sofia. Because even though she was a shy kid, she possessed an inquisitive nature that manifested itself in her love for the great outdoors. But the script of her life, and the life of everyone she loved, was about to be flipped. Because on the 4th of February, 2003, tragedy struck. At around 8pm in the late evening, Sophia was playing with her toys when she overheard her grandma's boyfriend, Jose, ask from another room if anyone wanted to follow him to the store. This was the night before Sophia's birthday. Sophia was excited to hear this and immediately ran to her mother, asking if she could follow Jose to the store, to which Maria said, yes. Maria also gave Sophia a dollar to spend at the store after helping her tie her sneakers and before letting her go on. However, by the time Sophia came out of the house to join Jose in the driveway, he had already gone. Why? Because no one had told him Sophia was coming. It was an unfortunate case of miscommunication that was about to get even worse. The store was just five blocks away from their house, and the route was familiar enough to little Sophia that she felt she could walk there on her own to meet Jose. One can imagine she planned to surprise him with his feat of maturity. So a four-year-old Sophia, mere hours from clocking five, stepped out into the night alone, headed for the store. And by the time Jose would return, he was alone. The first question everyone in the family asked him was, where is Sophia? And he was confused because no one had told him Sophia wanted to follow him. You can imagine the terror that must have taken hold of the Juarez family at that moment, that night. They immediately called the police as they began asking everyone they could in the vicinity if they had seen Sophia. Some said they noticed seeing her heading towards the store alone, but no one saw Sophia make it to the store. It was almost as if she had vanished into thin air, somewhere between both locations. Three minutes after the 911 call, the police arrived and they launched the most extensive and most intensive missing person search in the history of the state of Washington. Immediately, the police arrived and they began questioning every family member present around the time of Sophia's disappearance. Meanwhile, seven patrol officers searched everywhere and everything within a three mile radius of her neighborhood. One of the first clues came that night from one of her cousins who said he saw Sophia walking down the driveway with a strange man clad in all black. However, because the boy was really young, they considered his account of events unreliable. The house was also extensively searched by cadaver dogs for any sign of foul play on the part of the family. And before you raise your torches, it's a common procedure, and you might be relieved to know that nothing was found. After initial investigations and the external search had proven to be fruitless, the safest assumption was ruled out. Sophia was not missing because she was definitely not hiding. I mean, how many toddlers do you know who would willingly play hide and seek at 9pm in the night? And no one within the family had done anything to her. They were all innocent. However, this meant that something more serious happened. Sophia was either missing because of an injury, because she was lost, or worse, 
because she had been abducted. An hour after the 911 call, Sophia's disappearance made the news, and this attracted attention from far and wide. Many people, mostly strangers, gathered at Sophia's home and rallied to search for the missing girl. These volunteers teamed up with the police, hounds were brought in to pick up scents, night vision and thermal imagings were employed. The FBI were brought in within that same hour, on that same night, and an Amber Alert was issued, the first of its kind in the history of Washington. By the following morning, the Coast Guard was called in. Nearby rivers were searched, city crews searched sewer systems, flyers were distributed, and a $6,000 reward was sent out for anyone with any information that could lead to finding Sophia. The police also grilled every offender who lived around that area, painstakingly interrogating each and every one of them until they were sure the offenders had nothing to do with the disappearance of the little girl. While this was happening, the police encouraged the public to send any information that could help in the rescue of the little girl, and at the height of the case, they had accumulated up to 800 tips, but none of them led anywhere. Six days later, the family would hold a candlelight vigil for Sophia with over 300 people in attendance, and a procession was made from Sophia's home to St. Joseph's Church. Meanwhile, the search continued as the case lost steam and the will of those searching grew cold. In the weeks and months that followed, everyone came up with their theories of what had happened. The earliest and most convenient theory pointed to Jose, Sophia's grandmother's boyfriend, as the culprit. The belief was that he had secretly taken the girl and done something horrible to her. However, like we mentioned earlier, he was thoroughly interrogated by the police and CCTV cameras at the store confirmed that he hadn't arrived with Sophia. However, there was one other person that drew suspicious, another member of her family, her dad. However, he denied having anything to do with her disappearance and told the cops that he didn't even know she was missing because he had never met her and wasn't even in communication with her mom. It turned out he was telling the truth and eventually, the police ruled him out as a suspect after he gave them a verifiable alibi. The last and most persistent theory that made the rounds was that Sophia never left the house. The theory continues that someone in her family, or someone's, made Sophia disappear after probably doing something incredibly bad to her. But this theory had always proven to be false from the very first night, because the house was searched thoroughly and cadaver dogs had swept the entire premises and found nothing. Also, how many of the family members would have been complicit in the act and what would the motive have been? That family member would have had to be a sociopath whom the family have no reason to suspect. And if they did suspect, why would they have kept quiet? The household had too many members at the house that night for that theory to stand. Meanwhile, as people churned out their own theories, weeks would once again turn to months, and months to years, until yet another tragedy struck the Juarez family. The year was 2009, approximately six years after Sofia had gone missing. Her mother, Maria, was 29 at the time and had endured those long, terrible years without her daughter when she eventually built the courage to restart her life. She had fallen in love and moved to California with her boyfriend, and they planned to start a family together. At the time, they were expecting a son. Maria still believed that her daughter will return. But you know how the lack of closure can consume an individual so much that they remain static for years? Well, Maria didn't want that for herself. She wanted a fresh start, but life can be cruel sometimes. After giving birth to her son, Maria passed away from complications relating to the birth. She died without knowing the fate of her daughter, and her family were once again confronted with the grief of another painful loss. Fast forward to 2021. At least 12 years had passed since Maria's death and 18 had passed since Sophia's disappearance. And while the case had already gone cold, hope on the side of the family, the community, and the local police department was still alive. Then on March 15th, 2021, the most bizarre thing happened. A TikTok user with a handle at AKA Yala posted this interview he did with a homeless young woman that he stumbled on in Culiacan, Sinaloa, Mexico. 
In the video, the woman speaks about how she was kidnapped from her family before she was five. She says her age is 22 and that if any of her family members are watching, she wants to come back home. Unsurprisingly, this video went viral almost immediately and the comment section went wild. Some immediately made the connection between the lady in the video and the four-year-old missing picture of Sophia. It looks like that girl named Sophia who got taken away from her family in 2003. What's actually more baffling is the fact that she looks more like her than the digitally aged pictures that the police department had presented a few years before. Meanwhile, someone wasted no time in reaching out to the police with this new discovery. However, by the time the police got involved, the lady was nowhere to be found. The TikTok interviewer went back to the park where he met her, but she wasn't there. Eventually, the police were able to trace her and obtain her DNA. Sadly, it revealed that she wasn't Sofia Juarez. Some months after this, another light was shown on who might have been responsible for the disappearance of Sofia Juarez. In June 2021, a witness that the police deemed as highly credible approached them with a detailed description of a suspect and his vehicle that the police now believe was involved in Sofia's abduction. The suspect in question was an Hispanic juvenile male, estimated to be 11 to 14 years old at the time, but will be anywhere between 30 to 33 years today. He was light complexioned, had a chubby baby face with a mark on his cheek, dark, short, wavy hair, and big hands for a person his age. According to the witness, this suspect approached Sophia and led her towards a van as she cried and he laughed. The van was a light-colored, older 1970s to early 1980s type, full-size panel van with no side windows. The vehicle was occupied and stopped in the roadway at the next side street. Police believe that the van and the suspect are likely associated. Once again, this discovery had led to more questions, like who was in the van? Just how many were involved in the abduction of little Sophia? This witness account makes sense because it explains why the quick response yielded no results. The captors were probably long gone before the search had begun, before 911 was even called, and before Jose, Sophia's grandmother's boyfriend, even got home. Today, many questions are still unanswered, and as painful as it is to admit, despite all the clues and strong leads, Sofia Juarez had still not been found. But her family hadn't given up hope. Like I stated in the beginning of this video, you can never wait too long for a loved one to return home.